Good morning, friends. It's August 4th, 2019. I'm going back over just the thumbnails of recent videos to give a sense of the trajectory in case you're new to this channel and you're kind of wondering what's been going on here. I don't comment on issues of the day quite as much as some bloggers, but I do have persistent themes. So when you tune in, it's kind of like an episode of something because there's familiar characters in a sense. Certain people, certain blogs, places, cities. So it is a world and it's pretty much this world, but there's a lot of science fiction as my longtime listeners and readers understand. When I do, well, my background as a kid was growing up with a, a planner, a regional and city planner. That's a real job. You get a doctorate, and this this guy was practicing overseas, meaning outside North America, meaning there was a lot of blank canvas to work with. So I got used to the idea that you could just plan whole cities out of nothing, like basically out of the Sahara Desert. And I was not formally trained in this. I'm talking about my dad, but the mindset kind of set in. And even when I got to Jersey City and was a Catholic girls school teacher, I still had these big plans going in my head about, hey, why don't we put a Dymaxion map on the back of Lowe's Theater made of, you know, high resolution and we can show, well, once you've got a board like that, you can show lots of stuff. And you know, it probably would have been obnoxious, a lot of light pollution. But that was a big black, a big blank wall right behind, right next to my house. I was behind Lowe's Theater in Journal Square. That Lowe's Theater, if you know New York City, you get off the PATH train at Journal Square, you come up the escalator and there is a Lowe's right there. I live right behind that, I used to. And I also wanted to buy the Stanley there, that theater to your right as you come out of the station and put IMAX films in there where people could learn whatever their schools wanted them to learn because the idea is you're being assigned some people go there for just because they want to audit entertainment they don't care if they're not getting academic credit but a lot of times students are coming over from new york city on the path train to watch curriculum movies now since then with the invention of youtube and piped video to each pod study carol it's not really as important now to have so many screens, but it's still, I was looking for a way to to pump life into Jersey City while I was there. It was just in my nature because of my background. So there's why I kind of go into Asylum City mode. I've also spent time on U.S. military bases, especially Clark and Subic, and I had good experiences there. It's like I got to buy inexpensive scuba stuff that... Uh, at the px and i got to you know appreciate what what a good life would be for an officer in r and r right it's like i got to savor the military as a as a fun place to be even though that's not what it really is right for most people so i have this certain background and that leads me to that informs my videos going forward <clears throat> now my big thing what genre is synergetics is there's this two volume work that I got into out of Princeton having completed my philosophy undergraduate work and instead of going to grad school I continued volunteering with the Center's Network Long Story and exploring American philosophy on my own and came across the Bucky Fuller stuff and joined in in that whole uh, Cold Warrior initiative you could say and I say cold warrior because I mean it's about keeping wars cold, meaning psychological, meaning not hot, meaning no blood and guts, right? We're not bombing the crap out of you. We are debating you. We are willing to just, um, you know, talk it out on YouTube a lot. So I push my stuff on YouTube. <clears throat> it's kind of you know, a small following, right? If you add it all up, I don't do a lot of analytics and I don't confine these things like I can share them elsewhere besides YouTube and so forth. So going back, I'm trying to find synergetics 
emerging in schools so that I can work with those schools and we can collaborate. And so where's the network of schools that are teaching what I call American history, American philosophy? It's like right now we are under the thumb of some kind of, uh, Fuller called it law cap, it's been called the business plot, whatever it is. It's a global oligarchy. It's not just based somewhere in some city that really would prefer that we not explore this curriculum because why? Is it racist? Is it white supremacist? No, it's hopeful. It's like, hey, we could build cities from scratch and actually we don't have to do that. We can start with a military base somewhere. And, you know, what we do need to do, though, is prototype. And so I get a lot of inspiration from EPCOT, which used to stand for EPCOT, Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. And there's the buckyball right smack in the middle of it, right? There's that giant thing. And so it looked to me like the grunge was all prepared to, like, teach the future and get us there. Like, there were hopeful signs, but as the, as the decades wear by, you realize that no, no one's really planning to teach any of this stuff, even though the author has a Medal of Freedom, and he's all woven in with the poets, and it's like totally American literature. I don't think there's any denying that, so it's not being taught. So what the heck, you know, how do we tell this history? How do we get derailed this way? And how do we rectify the situation? And I think what's happening is Oregon Curriculum Network is free to sort of accredit and find and discover and make alliances with schools that teach American literature, see so city planning and so forth. So it's all about, and what does Tulsi have to do with it? Just you can watch some of my videos. You might be seeing as as I scroll through these that there's stuff here you might want to watch, right? And that's kind of my point. It's like, but the overview is let's update the curriculum if we want people to have better lives. It's not all on the backs of these scapegoat people called politicians who don't really have the qualifications. They're always looking in the back office for people to tell them what to say and what to do. And there's plenty of big money back there, and you can believe that, telling them exactly what they should do. So they're taking orders. You should look at them that way sometimes. Even the presidents, right? All the top politicians are pretty far down in the uh, pecking order, you could say. Now, I'm not here to offer a specific conspiracy theory other than to say... You know, as Quakers, we have our own little networks, and if we want to teach this stuff in Quaker schools, we're free to do that, and to our competitive advantage, right? So this, you could say, is almost a commercial. Come on down, join a Quaker school and learn some of this stuff. But, you know, it's, it's, it's more like sometimes I go into rant mode, and sometimes I'm... Well, it's not interesting if I'm just sitting here quietly doing Quaker worship. That wouldn't make the best YouTube, I don't think. So I do the ranting part out here, some of the ranting part. And Wittgenstein's a big part of it, right? So because to see things the way Fuller did takes some aspect shifts. You need to shift your perception a little bit, see things a little differently. And that comes with the territory in terms of learning the geometry and getting into the mindset, reading the science fiction, it's auto, education automation, try that one from the 60s, and check out the Dymaxion House again, what was that all about, visit the Henry Ford Museum, check it out for real, okay, I think that gives you the flavor, um, going back to uh, to some of the other work I'm doing, talk to you soon.